Hi guys, welcome to my channel on CD Made Easy. Today we'll be looking at a topic called superior trochoid. If you're new on this channel, please click on the subscribe button and turn on your notification so that you can easily get notified when I release a new video. So let's see what is superior trochoid. Superior trochoid is the part of a bond which lies on the outside of a circle when it rolls along a straight line without sleeping. Now, when we talk about superior trochoid and epicycloid, they look familiar, they look the same. Now, when we talk about the, the main difference between superior trochoid and epicycloid is that for epicycloid, the generating circle rolls on the outside of the directing circle, while the superior trochoid, the generating circle rolls on the outside of the directing line. So now, we want to see how to construct a superior trochoid. So the first thing we're going to do Let's look at the question, which says, draw a superior trochoid with points P, 5M in outside another circle. When you hear the word outside another circle, it means superior trochoid, which rolls on a straight line. That makes it a trochoid. But if it's an epicycloid, it will be, it rolls on another circle without slipping, taking your initial position from the bottom. So the first step is to draw a circle with radius 25 mm. Don't forget that from the question, we're given diameter 50 mm. So when you're given the diameter, you use the radius, which is half of the diameter. So the first thing to do is to draw a circle with radius 25 mm. So guys, can you pick up your compass, your pencils and your ruler and let's start the journey to superior trochoid. So get your compass and draw, you measure 25 and draw the circle. From there, you locate a point P, 5mm outside the given circle because the question says, draw a superior trochoid with point P, 5mm outside another circle. So we need to locate the 5mm. How do you do that? So you just come to the middle of the circle. Since the radius is 25, 25 plus 4, that gives you what? 30 mm. So from the center of the circle, you measure what? 30 mm. After you measure 30 mm, just use it to draw a circle. Measure 30 mm on your compass. So you place it at the center, let's be at the center of the circle this way. And the next thing to do is to draw your superior circle. That's the external circle. Having done that, the next thing is to divide your circle into two or eight equal parts. Step four. Project horizontal lines at each of the divisions. Now you've been able to divide your circle into eight equal parts. The next thing is to project horizontal line. Just place your, your T square to project these lines. You project across 
a division. Now, when you're projecting, the difference between this and inferior is that for inferior trochoid, we projected from inside. But because this is superior trochoid, you are projecting your horizontal line from the outside circle, which is the external circle. You can see that I projected from here. This is the first one. This is the second one. So all the lines are coming from the outside circle, the external circle. The next thing to do is to mark off its equal divisions on the tangential line. Don't forget that we divided the circle into eight equal parts. That means we are going to draw tangential line. We're going to draw eight equal divisions on the tangential line. How do you get this division? Just bring your, your compass, take the distance between any of the division. Just take the distance between any of the divisions that you have drawn. So you pick it up. Okay, so just pick it up, any of the divisions. So you can have maybe from one to two, from two to three, just pick any since you have equal divisions. Then center at the starting point, you mark off eight equal divisions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we go to step six. You draw perpendicular lines from each of the divisions that you've drawn. So we have to mark up to draw perpendicular lines. So this is one, two. In drawing this, all you need to do, just bring out your set square. Use your set square to draw the perpendicular lines because it must be at 90 degrees. So place your set square at the first division. Draw your perpendicular line to the center of the circle, to the center. This is the center of the circle. So you stop there, take it to see to the second one. You also project, take it to the third one. Let's touch the division and you project. So that is how to draw your perpendicular lines on each of the divisions. After you've done that, you now name the points, your center, line as C1 to C8. If you have divided your circle into 12 equal parts, all you need to do, you also mark off 12 equal divisions and you name your, your center as C1 to C12. But because we have divided into eight, we have to name it into eight equal divisions, which is C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, and See it. Don't forget that the center, the center line is also called the center line of the generating circle or the center of the generating circle. So after that, you number your circle. I'm starting because the question says we should take our initial position from the bottom. So the bottom is zero P or eight. So this is my zero, which is the starting point. I move to one, I move to two, I move to three, to four, five, six, seven. I can close up, this is still eight. This is zero is my initial point. So now after you've named, you've named your circle, the next thing to do is to get your points. How do we get the points? So bring out your compass and take the radius of the superior circle. Take the radius of the external circle, which is the bigger circle, just like this. Take the radius, pick it up, center at C1. Center at C1, you strike an arc on line one, center at C1, strike an arc on 
line one this way take it to c2 using the same radius which is the radius of the superior circle strike an arc on line two this is line two this is line one because this is one and seven this line is one and seven this line is two and six this line is line three and five while this line is line four this one remains as line zero or line eight so now I want to take, I want to go to line, I want to go to C2. Now when I get to C2, I will strike my arc on line 2 because I'm on C2. Then I'll take it, I'll go to C3. When I get to C3, I'll strike my arc on line 3. This way, I'll take my compass, I'll move on to C4. When I get to C4, I'll strike my arc on line four. Line four should touch the top line because that's the mid, that's the center. So when I get to C5, I'll switch my compass to my right hand side. And I will strike an arc on line five. I'll move from C5, I'll go to C6. When I get to C6, I'll strike an, my arc on line six. From there, I'll move on to C7. I'll strike my app on line seven anyway it touches line seven you just strike your app then i'll move on to c8 i'll strike an app on line eight now in all this we use the same radius we use the same radius so the radius is not to be adjusted now the same way i did for c8 is just the same way i can bring it back to zero and strike an arc on zero but if i do it is it will still fall on the superior circle So now I've been able to mark out my points. The next thing to do, just bring out your French curve and connect it together. Connect the points together. That gives you the superior trochoid.